Hi, welcome to my channel Mostly Knitting. If you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back. And if you're new here, I'm Tash, and this is a weekly podcast where I talk mostly about the knitting that I've been doing during the week, and I also put out regular tutorials. So it's Wednesday the 20th of November, and I'm recording from Sydney, Australia. Now I have two small finished objects this week, but I thought I would start with another regular segment, Friend from the Vault, which is uh, some knitting that I have finished earlier. And I happen to be wearing it at the moment. It's a garment and I knit this in 2013. Now, this is Twigs and Willows by Alana Dacos. And it was in um, a book called Botanical Knits, but it also is available individually on Ravelry. Now this um, sweater, it's actually, it's a cardigan. It's held up really well, but I haven't actually worn it very much, mainly because I'm not always quite sure what to wear it with. I do really like this color, but it's a bit tricky in terms of matching it with other things in my wardrobe. So the gauge for this pattern is meant to be 20 stitches and I got more like 23 stitches. So I knit the 35 inch bust size and it's come out quite a bit smaller, which I was expecting, um, but it's come out at 30 and a half inches, which is an inch and a half of negative ease. Now, when I made this, I was making things with a lot more, um, or a lot less ease, a lot more close fitting, but I do think for a cardigan with a button band, it's good to either have no ease or perhaps an inch or two of positive ease. Another feature of this pattern is it's got this, it looks like sort of an I-cord. It's not an I-cord, but it's got this feature, at least I don't think it is. Um, it's got this feature here, which is really lovely, but it doesn't have a lot of stretch. So um, yeah, so I, I do like it though. It's, um, it fits reasonably well, like the sleeves aren't too tight, um, but it is a very fitted garment, which is okay. I just would prefer it if it didn't quite pull in so much. I mean, I could wear it open a little bit, but even if I wear it with like a couple of, um, a couple of buttons undone, it still sort of sits okay and you still get to see this feature, but I would like to at least have part of it done up so that it, you know, that it sits like that, I guess. Um, so this is actually, it didn't use a lot of yarn. It used five 50 gram balls. The Rowan felted tweed has really good yardage. 50 grams is 175 meters, but it is a very light DK, which is why it sort of ended up knitting at 23 stitch gauge, which is sort of more like sport weight. So I would say this yarn is definitely a light DK, borderline sport weight. In fact, I've used Rowan felted tweed DK for both shelter products, like sorry, shelter patterns, so Brooklyn Tweed Shelter, which this was designed in, and it's sized down, or Brooklyn Tweed Loft, which is a fingering weight yarn, and it, my gauge has usually been a little bit, um, well, larger for that. So it can kind, of, it sort of sits in between those two, those two particular yarns, but it's a very similar kind of, of yarn, which is like a wool and spun yarn. So it used, um, five, like I said, just under 550 gram balls, which is around 880 meters. It's got, I really like these buttons, um, and I, I cannot remember where I got them from. I got them, you know, obviously over a decade ago, and I don't usually buy a lot of buttons, but I definitely bought these online. I just can't remember where, but I think they go really nicely with this. With this cardigan i really love this feature it's definitely what drew me to the to the pattern so it is knit flat from the bottom up but i did convert the sleeves so normally you would knit the sleeves bottom up and then sew them in but i talked about this i think last week where i actually picked up stitches around the sleeve cap and knit down and i do think fit wise even though my gauge is smaller I think that is sitting in a really nice spot on my shoulder. Um, perhaps what I would have done differently maybe is maybe just cast on more stitches under the arms. Um, but then I still, actually that wouldn't have helped because I still would have had this same issue here. So probably the only thing could have been knit a larger size, but then if that was the case, yeah, maybe one size up. So just something to be aware of if you're making this pattern, if your gauge is a little bit smaller, um, this is, there's really not a lot of give here anyway. Um, but I, look, I think it's perfectly wearable. One thing that um, was really interesting when I was making this, cause I don't do a lot of, so because it was knit flat, it's, you know, it's in pieces. So I knit the back um, and the fronts separately. And I'm pretty sure I did actually, yeah, I even, I did, I sometimes I knit them all in one, um, like the body all in one piece, but I didn't cause I actually have a, um, I have a mattress stitch seam there, which I think is like, I love mattress stitches. So it's so good, but I don't often make pieced sweaters. So I knit the back, I knit the left front, left front, right front. And it was only when I was about to sort of, um, I think jo maybe join them. Um, I realized that 
I had there were six less rows on my left front than there were on my right front. So and I had I had actually finished I had finished everything actually I think yeah when I was meant when I was going to join them and I was going to I think mattress stitch it together. One one of these was six rows shorter than the other one when I was going to sort of join it all in um, to seam up the sides. So that was an issue. And I yes I had finished all of this. So I cut. I think it was around here so like because I had some waist shaping um, and I think maybe I just missed one increase so I'd missed like six, yeah, six rows so I cut across here I put like I'll show you some pictures actually up here of what I did I put needle a needle in like along here and then skipped a row and then another needle just in the right leg of every stitch and then kind of like in an afterthought heel where you snip a, a stitch sort of in the middle row and then you unravel so I had these two pieces like this and then I knit up six more rows and then I grafted it together. I don't even know, like, I mean, you can't, I don't think you can tell anywhere. Like I've blocked it since and you can't tell. So, um, yeah, I'm, I was so delighted, with, um, you know, like that I had the ability to do it and the, and was, you know, and I, I didn't just sort of fold it up and chuck it in a corner. I'm like, no, I can do this. Just, you know, a little bit of patience and it actually didn't take too long. So, yeah, um, I think that's all I want to say about it, except um, it is getting pretty warm, so I'll probably take it off. But yeah, it's a lovely pattern, really well written. And look, obviously, I don't even know if this book is for sale anymore, but it's a really lovely book. There was a second version as well, actually. And I'm not even sure if Alana Darkos is um, designing, because I haven't really sort of seen anything kind of lately from her. Um, but yeah, she has, definitely has some really lovely, very romantic patterns. Um, I have knit a few of her patterns, some shawl patterns and maybe even a hat as well. So anyway, that's my friend from the vault, Twigs and Willows. So I'll show you my two finished objects now. They're two hats. One I was working on last week and this is my baker's hat by E.M. Knits and it's designed for a worsted weight yarn and I used some um, Madeline Tosh DK that I had in stash and as a result it's come out um, a bit smaller. So I used the recommended needles of four millimeter um, and I cast on 92 stitches but this is has ended up more like a child's size um, and I also didn't have a lot of yarn. I think I only had 71 grams. So this is um, this weighs about 70 grams and I had one gram left so I didn't really have enough yarn to do even one more row I sort of squeak just squeaked it out I will put it on so it's not like crazy crazy small but it definitely feels a bit snug and a bit short so it like and if you see here like obviously like I knit the ribbing to five inches but I think if you're thinking you're going to run out of yarn I would actually cut that a bit smaller because you can always go up higher but you can't when you've got ribbing you kind of at least need to meet that otherwise that just looks really weird so um yeah my recommendation recommendation is if you're a bit short of yarn knit the ribbing a bit shorter because you can always if it turns out it's longer and you, you just fold it over the stockinette section anyway i think it like it only sort of just covers my ears so i think it would fit like a not a little kid but like a maybe a you know nine ten year old pretty well and certainly the colors are quite sweet so yep so anyway that one's finished um which i'm yeah i'm happy about i think it's really sweet and i actually do have someone i think in mind who might like it so um like um my daughter alex babysat some um neighbors pretty regularly and they have a daughter who's about that age so and i think she might like this one so anyway i'll see um so that's one finished object and Oh yes, if in future, so I knit this on 92 stitches. If I was using DK weight yarn, I would um, I would add another eight stitches and go up to 100 stitches. That would probably be enough, and you'd need more than 70 grams. So that's my that's one of my two finished objects. My other one I hadn't actually even started, and this is um, a new pattern called a twisted affair by um, I'll show you there by Hohi Locatelli. So it's a free pattern. She's only just released it. And as soon as I saw it, I just thought, oh, that's so pretty. And I'm really in the mood to make hats at the moment, even though it's coming into summer here in Australia. Um, but I just think it's really, it's great portable knitting. And I, I do this sort of stuff when I'm walking. And this pattern here, it's just two by two ribbing. And then you've got a cable every 10 rows. So the yarn that I used for this was some leftovers from a hat that I made for my son. I talked about this last week that I planned to. It's called Fiddlesticks Peppin. 
Um, I don't know where it doesn't matter doesn't matter here this is the yarn anyway it's a really lovely sort of squishy yarn 50 grams is 85 meters so it's not great yardage but this this was about one and a half just a bit over one and a half balls so this weighs 78 grams which is a hundred about 130 meters now the gauge my gauge I don't know if you, you may or may not be able to tell you can see I've only got one two three four cables the cables are meant to be done every 10 rows, but my row gauge is much taller. This yarn is quite sort of, you know, plump, and obviously with only 80, 85 meters for 50 grams, it's quite, um, yeah, like it's a, it's a, probably a bulkier yarn than the, um, what's that, Woolfolk, uh, Woolfolk Luft is the recommended yarn. That yarn has a much larger yardage for the gauge, oh, you know, for this, like I got stitch gauge, but my row gauge, because the yarn is a bit plumper, um, I definitely didn't get row gauge, my rows were taller. So, and I didn't really notice that as I was knitting it, I just was, you know, I was walking and knitting it, so I didn't, I wasn't really even measuring. Um, but I've sorted that out by, there's meant to be five cables and I did four. So five times 10 would have been 50 rows, but I, I sort of got that same height in 40 rows. So, and I think it looks good, like I'll, I'll try it on. I quite like it um, and I love this color I've just I did write down the color the color is 1026 which is this sort of khaki green brown and like you can put that wherever but I think it kind of looks nice if you just sort of sit it there and yeah I kind of like to have my hair sort of out a little bit with a yeah so and I'll show you the top um, yeah I think it's great the only thing that I will say oh so the gauge is 19 stitches and 25 rows I don't know how many rows I got but definitely like obviously a lot less rows my my rows were much um, much taller so the other thing that I wanted to mention so great pattern free pattern I highly recommend it um, there was one thing that I will say about it that um, when I was reading the chart and it's there's the instructions for the cable the um what you actually have to do it's a six six stitches so it's there's eight stitches involved in the repeat and the cable is a two over four so you put two and it's a free pattern so i can talk about this you put two stitches like the two knit stitches go on a cable needle and come to the front so that's kind of because it's coming to the front that's what you're going to see and then with the next four stitches you actually knit to purl to so you're actually knitting onto the pearls and purling onto the knits but because they're hidden behind the two stitches that are um that are coming in front of them you don't notice that and then you just purl the next two stitches here so um but when i was reading the pattern the the semicolon in the cable section the semicolon's in the wrong place so it looks like you're supposed to um put two stitches on a holder then knit two and then semicolon purl to knit two from the cable needle and i was like how can i work four stitches from the cable needle when I, when I only put two stitches on the cable needle so the semicolon was in the wrong spot and then when i looked up at the written directions it was in the right spot but because i had messed up pure joy by hohi locatelli quite recently by not reading the pattern properly i was like hang on a minute so I, I paid a lot of attention I'm reading the pattern I'm looking at it going am I like you know I've done a lot of cables am, am I reading this wrong um, anyway when I looked up and I saw in the written directions it was written correctly I think what threw me off was that I was purling on when after putting the two stitches on the cable needle I was purling into knits and knitting into purls and I thought oh maybe I'm not doing something right but no that is actually what you're meant to do so yeah great pattern and I guess I made it in a week and oh the other so there's a few things that I actually do want to mention about it I do a long tail cast on when I do hats because then when you join in the round you get the really nice um, swooped edge of the long tail cast on not the pearl bump edge of the cast on as your presentation side but then when you but if it's a folded brim pattern I'll show you up nice and close you actually then see the pearl bumps because that is what would have been on the inside and see how that's the nice swoopy bit but with it so with a folded brim you don't really want that you actually want so two options there two pr very easy options you could still do the long tail cast on and just knit one row flat 
or you could do the cable cast on and join straight away in the round. Either of those would work fine if you don't want to see those bumps, oh, not those bumps, those bumps there when you turn up. I mean, it's not that big a deal, but you definitely see them. See the bumps at the top there? Anyway, in looking at Hohi's pattern, like at her photos, you see the bumps. So obviously she's not fussed with it and it's not mentioned in the pattern. So you, you definitely can do it that way. Um, but I think I prefer the, the look of the swoopy bits rather than the bumps. So um, yep, yeah, but that's just something to keep in mind. So yeah, great pattern and it's knitted on a five millimeter needle so it goes very quickly. Oh, and also Hohi talked about it on her most recent um, knitting journal podcast. Right, that's it for my finished objects. Actually, I did find the yarn. That's the Fiddlesticks Peppin. Very nice, smooth yarn. Very soft and squishy. We'll probably pill a bit, but for a hat, that's not really going to matter unless it really gets, you know, messed around. But I think I'm going to keep this one for myself. I really like this one. Right, so I'm up to my works in progress, and I have um, one new work in progress, and it's another twisted affair. I just enjoyed it so much, and I thought I, this is going to be my new walking knitting. And so here's my new work in progress. I'll show you the yarn that I've chosen. Um, this is, you might recognize this if you've been watching for a little while. Um, this is the yarn De Rirum Natura Ulysse in the colorway Briere that I used for my Magnolia Bloom. And then this is Kremke Soul Wool Silky Kid in the num uh, color 234 Mallow. And I used this for one of my Ingalls sweaters by Caitlin Hunter. So those two together, that's a sport weight yarn and that's obviously a silk mohair. And I did see, there's already about a hundred projects already, somebody had used a sport weight and a silk mohair and um, yeah, and it fit fine, like they were happy with it. So I think that's a good combination if you're looking for alternate yarns. I did mention, um, because the, the wool folk luft is pretty expensive another option would be the cartier concept cotton merino which is a similar kind of yarn this is a very different kind of yarn right but like it, i think it worked well so you don't have to use that um, and obviously here i'm using a silk mohair and a um like a wool a sport weight wool so i'll show you what it looks like i've only just um just turned the first cable and I did actually, and you can see, so see how this is the um, going to be the inside. See how I've actually got the pearl bumps there. So this time I did a long tail cast on and I did one row flat and then I joined to knit in the round. And then what I'll do is, um, you can see this is where it is. This is my join. And all I'll need to do is when I weave in that tail, just sort of, you know, um, you can't even really tell. I'll just join it there and then you know, neaten it up a little bit when I, when I weave it in. Um, so that then when I fold it, I get the swoopy bits as the presentation side. Yep. So now I did already plan ahead. Now that I knew the row gauge might be an issue, um, I can tell that this one definitely, um, the row gauge was different. Now I totally took, like I factored it in here just by doing four repeats instead of five. So that was an easy fix having missed it at the beginning. With this one, I thought what I'll do instead is I'll actually do the five full repeats, but instead of the 10 rows, because in the chart you do a cable and then you do nine more rows. So it's a 10 row repeat. Um, I'm going to do an eight row repeat. So I'll do the cable and then just do seven rows. And then that way I'll get all five. I mean, honestly, you can do either. You, you just do four. I, I could have done the same as this one, which would be fine. But I thought, oh, well. And I also um, did less rows here. So in the pattern, you're meant to do 17 rows and then the first cable. So I did 14 because I got to the required six centimeters. So, yep, just some small. That's one way that you can deal with um, you know, a row gauge difference is just if possible. I mean, it's a bit trickier if it's feral. You can't really just cut out a couple of feral colors, but you know, this crossing, cable crossing happening every eight rows instead of every 10, well, that's probably the intended distance between the cables anyway, um, because my row gauge is taller. So yeah, with a, that's pretty easy with such a large um, number of rows in between to just cut, cut a couple out. So yes, I obviously can't try this on right now, but that is um, my new walking knitting. So that's just the one new work in progress. Um, I've got quite a few other ones. Some I won't talk about very much because they haven't had much work, but here's one that actually has had a lot of work. 
Um, I probably should mention actually as well, uh, this is another friend from the vault that I'm not going to mention today. I was so hot that I had to take my um, twigs and willows off. And this is another La Alana Darkos pattern called the Spring Garden Tea, but I'll talk about that another time. I thought I'd actually already shown this one as a friend from the vault, but I don't think I have. So maybe another day I will, um, I'll talk about it, but it's, yeah, it's very, um, it's nice and light. Um, which is, even though it's not summer here yet, it is quite warm. So, right, sorry, back onto my works in progress. Um, oh, it is, I'm doing, this is a test knit um, called Snow Bloom um, by Jennifer Steingas, and I'm using the recommended yarn, which is Bichet Bouche Le Petit Lamb's Wool. This is medium gray, and this is turquoise. So I'm, I wasn't too sure about that. Not that I wasn't too sure, but I think I've been so inspired by Margot Chien lately, and just, I mean, for a while, but just particularly drawn to her color work and the really amazing bold colors that she uses that I think this pattern, Snowbloom, could totally use something like that. So even though this looks lovely, it's very subtle and I'm feeling like I want more boldness in my color work. So I'm, I, I will definitely wear this. I'm very happy with how it's going, but I think my next color work pattern, um, you know, if I'm choosing colors to put together that I haven't already, I will pick something that's got a lot of vavum. Um, anyway, let me try this on. So this has been on the needles for nine days. I just blocked it last night. Gee, it blocked so quickly and it looks so much nicer after blocking. So I've just got it on a couple of needles so that I could um, block it. So yeah, I think that's coming out really, oh, I'm liking it so much more. Um, I like it a lot more than, now that it's I've blocked it. Um, so I'm knitting the size A, which is a 36 inch size. And I've still got quite a f I just blocked it basically for today. Cause I thought, you know what, I went to bed and I thought I'll just quickly block it before I go to bed. And it dried overnight. It's a very thin, um, very lightweight yarn. And just with, you know, putting it on a bed with a, you know, you squeeze a fair bit of the water out and put a, um, like a pedestal fan blowing on it. It was dry overnight. So, and in fact, I'm really glad I did because I think I'm going to enjoy working on it even more. So I'm knitting the 36 inch size. The gauge is meant to be 22 stitches and 28 rounds. I'm pretty sure, and I'm using the recommended needles of 3.25 mil for the ribbing. I did, it was meant to be a rolled edge and I'm, I just did four rows of ribbing because I just, I don't really like a rolled edge very much. A lot of Jennifer Steingass's patterns have that and I quite often just switch it out. So I was, I asked for approval to do that and she was fine with that. Um, yeah, and I just like that better. I'll get that out of the way, sorry. Um, then, and I think my gauge might be more like 24 four stitches so it'll probably end up around 33 inches which is fine that's one inch of positive ease because I'm planning for this to be a top I don't have enough yarn for it to be a sweater I also asked permission and was granted permission to do that so you can see that I haven't finished the um the color work yoke yet I've got a few more rows to go I've done 42 rows it's quite a bit and there's 59 so I've got 17 more rows but once you get to about 47 so about five more rows of color work every row after that point for the, about the last 12 rows there's only four color work rows in the last 12 rows like a lot of it's sort of just spacing out um with just sort of little drops at the end so two rows plain color work two rows plain color work so i reckon once i get to row 47 i'll feel like i'm done so basically five rows which i reckon i'll do today and then it'll feel like the color work's finished even though it's not quite finished um, yep, so another, but another 17 rows. Um, I could possibly, because the, towards the end it's just like, you know, a couple of rows and a drop, little droplet, a couple of rows and a little droplet, um, I could cut out the last three. But we'll see. I'll just see based on yoke depth. Because um, 17 rows is, hmm, especially on a T, is still quite a bit more. Um, Yes, and I haven't really sort of read past to work out how many stitches to cast on under the arms. But yeah, it's got a fairly wide, I'm just gonna tie my hair back quickly because I feel like you can't see very well while my hair's in the way. Um, okay, so it's got a fairly wide um, neckline, but I actually quite like that in tops. I like to sort of have like, I don't like it so much in jumpers because I don't like to be able to see the t-shirt um, underneath the jumper neckline, but because this is going to be worn just over a bra, I think it's fine. So yeah, look, I've been talking about this for a while, but I just think it's really, really lovely. It's coming on really nicely and I'm 
I'm much more excited about it now that I've blocked it and I can see and I just wasn't sure about the color work and yet now I feel like there's enough of this green that it just sits quite beautifully against the gray so yeah very excited um, with that one I can't even if I finish it before the test date I can't I, I'm allowed to show you this much but I can't show you it once it's sort of completed until it's fully released so that um yeah, it'll be, it might be a finished object put aside and then I'll show it later. Um, yes, love it. So my next work in progress is Pure Joy by Hohi Locatelli. And I'm up to the border section. These are the two colors. This is Mist and In the Navy. They're the two colorways, but I finished working with the main color and I'm working on the border now. And I think I've got about... So the rows are getting longer and longer, but this is my last wedge. And I think I've got maybe 15 or 16 ridges to go. So 30, 30 to 32 rows, because um, you consume, here's my marker here. You consume an extra eight stitches every, um, every ridge. So yeah, getting there. I mean, I'm not in a rush. This has been on the needles for 59 days though. So um, yeah, I definitely want to get this done because there, I have some other projects that I want to start that I won't start that is sort of in a similar kind of fit the same bill as this one, like a bit of mindless knitting. So I don't want to start those until I've finished this one. So um, yeah, I just work on this one when I, I need to not be able to concentrate like I need to be able to give my complete attention to whatever else I'm doing but it's a bit too big and heavy for walking knitting so and I have to say in the beginning you probably do need to concentrate just a little bit until you get used to the back and forth thing with the wedges or if you've put it aside for a long time um, but because I'm working on this a little bit every day I'm totally fine with you know and by this stage right I'm, I know exactly what I'm doing I really love that um, this navy is just so lovely um, and I think it'll be fantastic once it's blocked. It's going to be really long, right? This is um, this is another 3.75 millimeter project, and I feel like just about everything I'm making is on 3.75 millimeters because I was wanting to knit something off like that. Snow Bloom is on a 3.75, and um, my Audrey top is on a 3.75. Anyway, I was just like trying to knit onto larger things, and I realised where are all my 3.75s and they're all on my projects. So um, anyway, that's um, getting going. And yeah, I don't know if we'll be finished for next week. It just depends. So my next three works in progress, I'm going to talk about quite quickly because they haven't had much work on them. This is the clay sweater by Ozetta and I'm using BC Garn Loch Lamond. And this has been on the needles for 37 days. I think all I've done is a few rows on this sleeve. Obviously you've seen, um, my attention has been elsewhere. Um, so this one, I'm um, fairly rapid decreases down the sleeves, like every eight rows. So that's coming in pretty quickly. Uh, yep, and I think I will, once I get a bit closer, I, I did mention I'm gonna um, block it part way just to see how much it grows in length, both for the body and for the sleeves. But I think that's probably about all I've done. I might actually put a marker in this one so I can see how much progress I make um, from last week. But yeah, not, not a great deal. Uh, I'm knitting the extra extra small which is a 39 inch size and it's coming out um, pretty much on gauge even though I'm using one needle size smaller a four and a half mil. It's got quite a nice um, slip stitch detail down the side to sort of hide where you switch like at the end of the round. Um, but yep, yeah, like I think this is going to be a really nice light um, sweater. I've got two works in progress left to show. Um, this one is the Audrey Top by Petite Knit. And I haven't actually finished the um, straps. I've only done maybe two rows on the um, on the body, basically because I was I needed to pinch the the needle off this one to put it on another one. So yeah, only a couple of rows done on this. But again, this is like this has been on the needles for 54 days, for, so almost two months. And I won't cast on another. Um, plant fiber sort of non wool project until this one's finished. So I want to get this one done There's actually not a lot of knitting left to do. There's not like it may look like a, lo a lot But I've got eye cord straps to finish which will take no time and then um, I'm a fair way down the body So yeah, there's there's really not a lot of knitting left on this I've just sort of been a bit focused on that test knit. So that's the Audrey top um, and my last one is the in I've actually put it in a bag um, 
because I won't, this is the Throw Over by Andrea Mowry and I showed this last week and I'd ripped it back, I still haven't even ripped it all the way back to the ribbing um, so that I can start working on the larger size because I'm going to go down a needle size to a 4.5 millimeter and I've got my yarn, I haven't even wound up the yarn yet but I won't start this one until I've finished the color work section of my snow bloom so I just don't want to have too fair I'll, they're obviously very different like you know this um, this is a much heavier yarn but I still I don't want to be working too feral sort of sections at least at the same time so once snow bloom I finished the yoke um, then I, I'll start the feral for the throw over and I'm excited to do that that's been on the needles for 20 days it's sort of it's still the days are you know ratcheting up even though I'm not working on it so um, but I, I'm pretty close to finishing the snow bloom yoke so yep so that's it for my current works in progress so I'm up to acquisitions and plans and I have one new pattern and that's the Zipper Sweater Light Junior by Petite Knit and that was gifted to me by Ursula. So thank you so much Ursula and I actually as far as plans go I have the yarn already um, in mind. This is Volmai's Lace Garn in the colorway Schwartz. Um, this is more like a light fingering even though it says lace and this is um, Shibui Knits uh, their silk mohair in the colorway Abyss. So those two together, I still have to swatch. The zipper sweater light has a pattern gauge of 23 stitches over four inches. Um, but with the zipper sweater light junior, I've got quite a range of sizes that could work for me. And I can sort of work in with whatever ease I want. That's not necessarily going to be too, um, too much positive ease. Cause I do want some positive ease, but not 10 or 12 inches so I do have to swatch for these just to work out then what size I want to make like work out how much ease I want and work out the right size so that's an upcoming plan as well which is exciting I have um, another acquisition um, which is a very just one ball of yarn and this is drops charisma and that might seem odd why would I just buy one ball of yarn but I actually had this shipped from I think it was the yarn store I'll correct this um, if I'm wrong, wool time in Canada. And this is colorway number 82, which is discontinued. And I had planned to make, well, I do, I am, have, have planned, am planning, am planning. It's like I can't even speak English. I am planning to make a Vena by Jennifer Steingas. And these are the three colors for the color work that I wanted to make because I'm totally copying another lady's version. Um, I'll put a picture of hers on Ravelry. It's amazing. I've shown it before, but I accidentally, when I ordered this, this is what I ordered. So you can see that red is totally wrong. Um, I just wasn't even paying attention when I ordered. That was the color that I was meant to order. So yes, so drop that one out and put that one in its place. Um, and I think that's going to be fantastic. So now I've actually got the yarn for that. Um, and that will be on my needles quite soon. So an acquisition and definitely a plan because that's a really beautiful um, color work sweater and at a fairly large gauge. So that one shouldn't take too long as well, but I've got to do the throw over first. So yes, I've, I've got quite a few things in the actual, in the queue with all of the yarn and the pattern and everything ready to go. Um, but still, I do have another plan and that is this, I talked about this last week, but the Stella quilt cushion, um, and I'm going to use the Pearl Soho linen quill that I got um, just last week but I won't start that until Pure Joy is finished because I think that will sort of the Stella quilt, quilt cushion will hopefully fit that sort of same place I'm not too sure because there is a bit of piecing so certainly the one large back will be very easy the little um, the little sort of motifs the quilt motifs might take a little bit more paying attention so one bit will be easy, one will, bit will be a bit involved, but I, I'm really keen to make that and to start using some of those pretty colors that I got. Another plan is the Peacock Tea. Um, so I've shown this yarn before. This is for the Peacock Tea. This is Cascade 220, and this is 100% cotton. This I find this actually pretty easy on my hands, but I still don't want to start this top until the Audrey top is finished. So um, when the Audrey top's finished, I'm going to use this yarn here for that. So, and I have um, one other, one other, well, two other plans actually. And that's because I'm really enjoying a twisted affair um, and I plan to do that as my walking knitting, I wanna have a few of those lined up. 
and and I, I like the fit I like how it looks and I actually think I'm really gonna like it with a sport and a mohair so I did some stash diving and I actually have more of this this is still the same yarn as the first one this is the Duriram Natura Ulysse but I do have enough of the um, hedgehog fibers kid silk that mohair so this is this was the combination these two together for my um, magnolia bloom so I have enough of that to make a hat so another a twisted affair so I will make another one of those I've got that one planned and um, I also found in my stash now this is actually a whole skein I know I don't need a whole skein but this has been sitting in my stash for over a decade and this is squish fiber arts rapture in the colorway ochre and then this is some mohair skein yarn um, her um, silk mohair that is left over from my cruiser cardigan um, which is actually her pattern this is um, k10 Christ Kristen yes so um, she is a designer and a yarn dyer and her yarns are beautiful I really love that color so I think these two so that's a sport weight silk mohair I'm gonna make another twisted affair with those two and I think that's gonna be fantastic I don't know that that's gonna suit me in my coloring if it looks really rubbish on me I'll just give it to someone else but I might if I love it I might just wear it anyway even if it doesn't look good on me uh, right so that's it for my upcoming plans so I'm up to what has caught my eye um, just a few sweater patterns one that is not actually out yet and it's by Isabel Kramer I'm probably gonna say this wrong but it's I think it's Heimathuffen um, anyway it's really pretty it's uh, it reminds me a lot of Rabinia and Rabinia light by Anne Wenzel um, with the just the color work motif but this version is uh, looks like it's a yoked sweater whereas Rabinia and Rabinia light they are both drop shoulder sweaters um, the Rab I may as well mention that because this it sort of caught my eye more recently again I've mentioned it before but Rabinia is a 16 stitch gauge pattern and Rabinia light is a 23 stitch gauge um, I like both of those as well I probably wouldn't do both the Heimathuffen and the Rabinia so I'd have to pick which one um, works best I don't know anything about the gauge on the Heimathuffen <laughs> Um, we'll see when it when it actually comes out it's not out yet um, but actually one of the reasons Rabinia sort of besides that pattern why it's also front of mind is um, Michelle from um, Mishi Fraz she is making I think her podcast is called not the worsted knitting podcast anyway she is making a Rabinia in this gorgeous green and kind of cream color it looks really fantastic so um, but I just don't have yarn in stash for that at the moment and I have so many projects where I have the pattern the yarn everything ready to go like I probably have like over 10 maybe even a dozen where I've got everything pattern yarn all ready to go so I just can't at the moment justify seeking out more yarn for something I want to knit but maybe you maybe you want to knit it and you don't have 10 you know things ready to go so I thought I'll mention it here because it's really pretty um, and you never know like um, even though I'm not planning to buy any yarn at the moment Black Friday is coming up so if I sort of have in mind the yarn that I would use for it if it happens to be on sale somewhere maybe I'll get it so we'll see which does bring me to my last what has caught my eye and that is the Adamson vest by Adamson vest by Rui Yamamuro and I saw that um, Kim is making it um, from um, Kim and Jonna so that one just looked so cute and it's um, it only uses three balls of wool folk Taj which is a worsted weight yarn 70 merino 30 mohair and that knits to a 19 stitch gauge so three balls is not a lot even though that's not a cheap yarn three balls hmm, I could maybe do that so um, I'll also be keeping an eye out for that yarn for the Black Friday sales I'm even thinking about getting the wool folk luft for the twist a twisted affair because I wouldn't mind you know it's only two balls I wouldn't mind just trying that yeah I've never tried that yarn a hat's a good sort of way to try out a yarn that you've never tried before but I couldn't justify buying two balls and having them shipped to like to Australia that just wouldn't make sense and I don't really feel like filling up a shipping cart just to but you know if I was getting the Taj and the Luft I don't know something to think about but I'll, I'll just write a little list and I'm not in a rush to get it but if it happens to be on sale and I and you know the color that I like is there anyway it's really pretty and I even like the color that John is um, using it sort of a really lovely mauve um, yeah just really pretty so that's it for what has caught my eye 
So last week in what has caught my eye, I mentioned a crochet pattern called the Zelt Sweater by Linda Skuya, and it's been crocheted in this really beautiful gold color, and it uses a fingering weight yarn held with mohair, and on a five millimeter hook, the gauge is 15 stitches and 10 rows in double crochet. Now at first I didn't even realize it was crochet, but I liked it so much and it reminded me that I'd been wanting to improve my crochet skills so that if I saw a pattern like this and I liked it, I'd actually be able to make it and have confidence that I could produce that result. So I'm really comfortable with holding the hook and the yarn and the mechanics of creating the stitches in crochet, but I don't know how to follow a pattern and I don't always know which loop I'm supposed to go into. So I know at the moment I don't have the skills to, uh, to make that pattern right now, but you have to start somewhere. So that's what I really would like to do is to improve on my skills in crochet. So I'd like to thank the sponsor of today's video Skillshare. I enrolled in a class I'd mentioned previously called the Four Core Crochet Stitches with Flavia Wolf, and I found that so helpful. I could see clearly where I was meant to be placing the hook and that was the thing that I was actually quite uncertain around, which exact loop I was meant to go into. So just to be able to see and hear her explain that part of it was really helpful for me. So I've been practicing the stitches by making some washcloths for my daughter Mia, and I've made this whole one out of single crochet. Um, which is, it feels really lovely and squishy, so I'm really happy with that. And I've started a new one uh, for to practice double crochet. And uh, what was really helpful was just to understand um, the height of the turning chain and which loop I was meant to go into for my, you know, for the first one of the row. And also to make sure that I ended up going into the correct, like going as far as I needed to into the last loop of the turning chain so that I wasn't ending up with a, par a parallelogram. So yeah, so I'm really excited to actually have something that is uh, functional, but I'm getting to learn a new skill at the same time. So when I finish this class, I've already got my new one planned, and that is going to be uh, one Christmas bauble per month with Vanya Infante. Skillshare is the largest online learning community for creatives with thousands of classes led by industry experts across craft, film, illustration, design, productivity, and more. Based on information about your interests when you join Skillshare, learning paths and classes will be recommended for you. There are a wide range of categories of learning paths you can follow to help you focus your creative journey. And they are available in a range of experience levels from beginner to advanced. Lately, I've been interested in leather work, so I've been exploring classes on sewing with leather. There's a class on leather craft basics, create your own leather wallet that has caught my eye and I plan to check that one out soon. So that is why I'm so excited to partner with Skillshare. The first 500 people to join Skillshare using the link below in the description will receive one month premium access for free to be able to explore the platform, try out some classes and see if Skillshare is right for you. Thank you so much Skillshare. So I'm just about to move into my personal stuff. So if you are leaving me now, thank you so much for watching. I may not be back next week. Um, so I'm moving into the personal stuff, but my husband is actually undergoing knee, double knee replacements right now. So I'm not sure what things are gonna look like when he gets home, how things will be. So I, if I don't record next week, that's why. If not, I'll be back in two weeks. But you know, all being well, he's home and recovering well, I'll be able to do another podcast um, in a week. So personal stuff. My husband's having knee replacements. Um, hopefully, yeah, just prayerfully that's going well. And my father-in-law arrived yesterday. So that's been really lovely um, having him. Every time he, and, and my mother-in-law's following soon, but um, on the day he arrives, even though he's, you know, flown for like, you know, 14 hours on the long flight and sometimes a short flight as well, which he did this time. He makes us dinner, um, usually Mexican. So he made enchiladas and tostadas. I'll put a little picture of him and Alex up there um, for us last night, which was really nice. So we had that. And then um, my daughters, um, Mia and Alex and I went and made terrariums at, um, at our church, like our church put that on. So it was me and the girls and my Bible study group. So it was a really lovely night. Um, Alex was getting a bit tired towards the end, but it was quite fun. I'm really, fingers crossed, I don't kill um, everything that's inside them. I think I need to go get a spray bottle to, because um, I think that's kind of the only way you water those things. You don't want to like 
there's no drainage in that glass bowl so but it was really nice and and yeah I don't know we'll see how we go it was fun to make them together poor Alex was very tired by the end she had been at work she works 10 hour days in childcare, so she'd been looking after toddlers for from seven till five and then the terrarium thing started at seven so by like nine o'clock at night she was you know she wasn't really enjoying herself at that point so we were like we just sort of like quickly did the last bit and left but it was yeah it was really fun um, other than that what's been happening um, you probably noticed um, if you're a regular viewer I'm in a different location so I'm down in the office in our house and I've cleared off the space um, where I normally record from because that's on the same level as my bedroom and the kitchen so my husband doesn't have to go up and downstairs after having two new knees he will be able to get up and you know around a lot easier soon because um, his knees will be better they've been pretty bad for a long time but that's why I'm down here now and I I guess one upside of that is you know when you move you sort of tidy up and um, I have m almost all my crafting stuff like sewing and fabric and everything all in this room now so and I'm you know hoping to sort of not right now because I'm still quite busy at work with marking and stuff but in the holidays get my stash sorted I will get a video up on that eventually but also just you know clearing things out and um, donating some yarn and just you know tidying up like this you know when you move stuff from one place to another it's like feeling like I'm drowning in stuff um which is all fine if like I'm going to use it but sometimes if it's you know if it if it needs to move on now sort of these Christmas holidays will be a time for me to sort of start um because we're not going away anywhere with my husband recovering from the surgery I'm going to be home um, on holidays for about seven weeks I might pop up and see my friend oh, I'd like to pop up and see my friend back in Brisbane for a little bit but other than that I'll just be here um you know doing day trips to the beach and hopefully doing some fun stuff locally but also spending a bit of time sewing and knitting and crafting and doing some things that just can't happen in term time all right I've talked enough thank you so much for watching and um yeah I'll hopefully be back in a week um if not certainly in two weeks hope you're enjoying your knitting bye